Hello, welcome to another episode of Pixel X Criminology. Today we will go back to the beginning of the 20th century and understand how a group of researchers revolutionized the study of crime and society. Have you noticed how some parts of the city seem safer, while others face challenges such as violence and marginalization? Is the problem with the people or the social environment in which they live? It was precisely this question that led to the creation of the Chicago School of Sociology, one of the most influential currents of modern sociology and criminology. By the end of the 19th century, Chicago was growing rapidly, welcoming immigrants, expanding its factories, and accumulating inequality. What was the result? The overcrowding of poor neighborhoods, the lack of urban structure, the increase in crime and social conflicts. Sociologists such as Robert Park, Ernest Burgos, Clifford So, and Henry Mackay realized that crime was not an individual problem, but rather a reflection of social and urban conditions. Thus was born the theory of social disorganization. For Saul and Makey, crime does not occur randomly but is concentrated in certain areas of the city. They identified three main factors that increase crime, population turnover, which impede the creation of community bonds, lack of social cohesion, where there is little interaction between neighbors and less informal social control. Poverty and inequality that hinder access and opportunity to basic services. This theory became known as the concentric model proposed by Ernest Bergs. He divided the city into rings in the center, commercial area around the transition zone marked by precarious housing and high crime, and furthest away, residential and suburban areas. If you've ever played SimCity, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. The transition zones had high crime rates, as it was the unstable space without social cohesion and with strong economic inequality. Are we going to apply this theory to Brazil? The favelas and the urban peripheries share characteristics similar to the transition zone. Irregular occupation, high population mobility, absence of public services in a state that often only appears in repressive form. But does this theory explain everything? The theory of social disorganization was revolutionary in its time, but it has limits. It ignores, for example, organized crime and white-collar crime, which occurs in highly structured environments. In addition, who defines what disorganization is? Doesn't the theory reinforce the idea that certain territories are naturally dangerous while others are safe? Isn't disorder just the order we don't want? This leads to another question. Is the problem of crime in the absence of the state or how the state operates in these territories? After all, the state is present in the favelas and the peripheries but often it doesn't arrive with public services, school, or infrastructure. It arrives with tanks, with repressive forces. Crime is a consequence of urban space, but it is also a political issue. And if crime is a consequence of urban space, what can we do to make cities safer? Invest in social public policies, create community support networks, parks, schools, or we will continue betting only on repression. And Pax Romana, the Chicago school showed that the criminal is not born, it is not biological. 
but it results from a dynamic of the social environment in which he lives. But are we building cities that foster social cohesion or deepen inequalities? Does the urban space you live in contribute to security and opportunity or reinforce a cycle of exclusion and violence? In the description, there are some reading indications. See you in the next episode.